Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about Christmas and the potential for shaking during the Christmas holiday in the year 2024. Now, we're seeing here that this actually lines up with the dates of Hanukkah, and we'll cover in another story the relationship between Christmas and Hanukkah. If you don't know that, that in itself is already significant, but in this video, we want to look at some other verses like Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Haggai, even touching on the book of Revelation, showing a common theme between what we see in the Bible and the Christmas holiday. Now, the first place we'll look is over in Jeremiah 10, verses 1 through 10. Now, here is one place that we hear about the Christmas holiday. It says, learn not the ways of the heathen. Verse 2 is talking about the customs of the people and how they are vain. But you see what it's talking about. It says, For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. So this is actually the act of cutting down a Christmas tree. And if you don't believe it, look at the next verse where it says, They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with a hammer so it moves not. That's actually the Christmas tree all decorated standing there in the living room or wherever. But anyway, we'll jump over to the book of Revelation chapter 11 where it's also talking about Christmas. You see there in verse 10 where it says that they make merry and shall send gifts to one another. But this verse here, this passage here, if we read on down, is actually prophesying about a great earthquake that will happen during this time or right after this time of them making merry there. Now, we can easily make a connection with this particular passage in Revelation and what we see over in the book of Haggai in chapter 2. It is talking about the 24th day of the ninth month, which is the eve of Hanukkah, actually. The Hanukkah festival is on the 25th day of the ninth month. So this 24th day would be Christmas Eve in the year 2024. But when we're looking here at what Haggai is talking about, on down, starting about verse 18 and on, again, he starts talking about an earthquake. And we see down in about verse 20, again, he's talking about the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month. But you see in verse 21, he's also talking about an earthquake where he says, I will shake the heavens and the earth. That is what we see referenced over in Matthew chapter 24 and Mark 13. To me, this makes a connection between the heavens and the earth shaking and the Feast of Hanukkah. Remembering how Hanukkah was instituted in the first place was the defaming of the altar by Antiochus Epiphanes way back there in 165 AD. But anyway, when we come over to the book of Isaiah chapter 24, we also see a reference to what could be Christmas as it's talking about people in verse 14 it says lifting up their voice they sing for the majesty of the Lord and cry aloud from the sea down in verse 16 he says from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs even glory to the righteousness but I say my leanness my leanness woe unto me the treacherous dealer have dealt treacherously yea the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. So you think on this, when and what day is it that people are singing glory to the Lord, but the Lord himself is actually saying, my leanness, my leanness. That's a day when the people are actually worshiping a false God. But then again, when we look further down in the chapter, particularly verse 20, He's talking again about an earthquake when he says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. So all of these verses from the Bible actually point to something significant around Christmas time. But let me show you a particular verse that's not in the Bible. This is coming from the lives of the prophets. This is the book that tells you about the lives of the prophets, what they prophesied about and to whom and how they were martyred etc you see isaiah in chapter one but when you come down to chapter two you read about jeremiah so let's read a little bit of this it says jeremiah is from anathoth and he died in tanfini 
or Tanfani of Egypt, having been stoned by his people. He was buried in the Enrons of Pharaoh's palace because the Egyptians held him in high esteem, having been benefited through him. So here you have Jeremiah who was prophesying back with the Egyptians who held him in high esteem because he actually helped them. Now, you see in these few verses in this passage that what he helped them with particularly was their problem with snakes. They had poisonous snakes, but through divine intervention, he was able to understand the snake fighters, which today we would probably call king snakes or something like that, or black racers. But anyway, these particular snakes like eating poisonous snakes, and he simply introduced them to them. And so to this day, they're all very grateful. But look right there in verse 8, where Jeremiah gave a particular prophecy dealing with Christmas. He says, this Jeremiah gave a sign to the priest of Egypt that it was decreed that their idols would be shaken and collapsed through a savior, a child born of a virgin in a manger. Wherefore, even to this day, they reveal a virgin giving birth and placing an infant in a manger they worship. So here is the nativity scene that we see all over the place with Mary and Joseph and the Messiah there in a manger. But now we understand where this comes from. This is actually an Egyptian symbol that represents not only the Messiah being born there, but it actually symbolizes their idols being shaken down. Their idols would be shaken and collapse. So if you think about it, the nativity scene is an idol or a prophetic idol made by the Egyptians based on the prophecy from Jeremiah about the destruction of the idols and the fall of Egypt or the fall of modern day Babylon pointing again during Christmas. So I find this all interesting and I wanted to share this with you. If you find it interesting, please let's talk about it down in the comment section. And in the meantime, peace and safety until your home. Shalom.